title of the message is Living for the Glory of God. Living for the Glory of God. Living a life consecrated, a holy fire, a holy flame for Jesus Christ. Living for the glory of God. Not just a better life. How to live a better life. Not just how to live a successful life. But a life to the glory of God. A life that's a living flame for him. Amen. Wow, we're going to go deeper tonight. Amen. You know, there's so much more. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 13, it says that our God is a consuming fire, and you can go into those flames. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you can be a holy vessel unto him. Praise God. There's so much more. Why would you live your life for the mundane when you can live your life in the will of God? Amen. Praise God. Why would you live your life just, just for the waxed car? Why would you live your life just for the boat? Why would you live your life just for surfing? Why would you live your life just for this or that? Why not have a higher calling? Why don't you live your life in a different realm to the glory of God. Amen. Shall we go for it? Do it all for the glory of God. That's your life. Do it all for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, turn to your neighbor and say, whatever you do. Do all for the glory of God. Now that means that whatever you're doing, whether it's gossiping or complaining or criticizing people or losing your temper or kicking the dog is not for the glory of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, that means you will have to live at a higher level than what you're living now. You'll have to get your act together. Amen. Praise God. Doing it all for the glory of God. Ephesians 5.18 Don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Turn to your neighbor and say, when was the last time you had a good drink? <laughs> Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, we honor the grace of God on, on people. And when I was pastoring, um, which is now a long time ago, it's over a decade ago when I pastored, but uh, there was a, a lady from Ghana, I think, her name was Christabel, and she had a grace of joy and praise. And, you know, and I remember this lady, she, she'd grab her tambourine, whether you wanted it or not, what, and she would play her tambourine unto Jesus. And, you know, some people may not appreciate it, but I enjoyed it. I felt the anointing of praise. And she was always bubbling in joy and praise. Such a grace of God on her. I remember I was shopping at Aldi's. Anyone know Aldi's? And uh, I was, had my trolley, I think, and I was behind this guy. And he was going down the aisle singing to the Lord, you know. <laughs> you know, and it just makes you think, you know. Singing and making melody in your heart 
to the Lord. And how often in these meetings the Holy Spirit has located someone and told them, I enjoy you singing in the shower to me. I mean, how many times has the Lord located someone and said, you know, you worship me. You are a worshipper. And I have to explain to the person that doesn't mean they're going to lead worship because someone may not appreciate that they're tone deaf. But the Lord sees that they worship in their heart. Amen. God wants us to be true worshipers our whole life or our speech, our activity, everything to the glory of God. Praise God. You know, uh, the basic basic uh, purpose of GEM, Jesus Encounter Ministries, is to give glory to God for what he does. We want the world to know what Jesus Christ does. We want the world to know how amazing and how real he is. We recently put up a video of a guy who was a drug addict years and years and years, 28 years, I think, uh, hard drugs and everything. And he watched a video clip of me praying, be baptized in fire, you know, in the fire of God. You know, he just watched this video. And he felt fire come down. Him. And he came to Holland and he said, I've been three, free, I think two or three years from drugs, cigarettes, heroin, whatever, you know. Hallelujah. We just want people to know. And, you know, when you meet him, wow. Uh, you know, I can't understand people who meet him but don't want to serve him. You know, when you meet him, he's an awesome person. And then just live your life for him, you know. Let there be a continuity of glorifying him now and going straight into heaven and you just continue your ministry. Amen. But that, that's our purpose. It, we just want to put up on YouTube and, and declare to people how great is our God and the awesome things he does. His great love for people. Psalm 105 verse 1, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. I, was, I, I went many times, 16 times to Indonesia. And I, I was, you know, sometimes with motorbike traveling, this is when I was younger, and uh, four-wheel drive, you know, and I arrived in this house and I was tired and uh, we sat down, <clears throat> always with a translator, almost always, and we sat down and they said to me, tell us a story. Tell us a story. Declare his wonders to the peoples. Amen. Tell us a story of what the Lord has done. Talk of his wondrous works. Verse 3. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done. Amen. So I'm going to remember. Um, so on one of those trips, uh, the first trip actually to Indonesia, um, I, we'd done a meeting and I came with the translator on his motorbike, I think, to a house of his family and it was his uncle. And uh, so the situation was, I didn't know the situation, but the situation was that the uncle was dying. Um, his heart was 85% dead and he was lying in the bed with the oxygen. And um, so young me, uh, I walked in and saw that everyone was miserable. It was about 10.30 at night. And so I said to them, with my great sense of decor, I said to them, you look like you're at a funeral. <laughs> so I walked into the room and, and um, heads are in the door looking, you know, his family. And I said to the, the guy, you know, um, do you believe that Jesus will do this? He said, oh, yes. He said, I've confessed my sins to the pastor. I'm ready. So... Um, Anyway, he says, I see Jesus standing in front of me. And with that, the power of God came on him. He took off his oxygen. And their, their eyes are like this, you know, looking through the door of the bedroom. And he walks out. 
out of the way, he gets into the lounge room and he starts doing star jumps in the lounge room. And uh, everyone in the house gave their life to Christ. And the translator sent me, a, sent me a picture of his uncle two or three years later on a motorbike off to Bible study, you know. <laughs> Amen. Remember his wondrous works, you know. When you're sitting at the table, remember what he's done. Tell it to your children. Tell it to, his grand, to your grandchildren, you know. Why not have a... Ch you know, there's something... When you tell a story of what the Lord has done, it changes the atmosphere, you know? When you start to speak of what he's done, he comes because he's the one who did it, you know? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, you know? It changes the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> you can only live... A life to the glory of God if you follow the light of Christ. Only, you know, only if you're pressing in to following Jesus can you glorify him. You cannot do it on your own path. You cannot do it. So we read Psalm 43 verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. So as you follow the light of Christ, you will come into his house, come into his habitation. Then I'll go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp, I will praise you, O God, my God. Amen. If you try to live a life of glorifying God without pressing into his light, you become religious, obnoxious, Bible basher, whatever. But if you follow after him, that anointing will come upon your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, follow the light. Otherwise, you'll be in darkness. So if you're going to give glory to God in your life, stop hiding your light. Stop being afraid of people's reactions, of rejection, of people being offended. And have the fear of God. Have the fear of God. And live your life to his praise and glory. And, you know, it doesn't matter what people think of you doesn't matter. Just live your life for him. Amen. Amen. Get over your pride. Turn to your neighbor and say, be humble. <laughs> be humble. Be humble. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. God primarily uses you to shine his light. <coughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you, I'm talking to you, are the light of the world. So live for his glory. Let your light shine. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I'm a child of the charismatic movement, you know, the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the 70s. And I was a teenager, and we had up to 130 people in our house. And uh, I witnessed the blind receiving their sight, legs growing out, all sorts of things. People speaking in strange tongues, you know, people baptized in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I remember one evening the Holy Spirit came upon me. I was about 16 and I began crying and crying and crying. They, they go, my parents go, what's wrong, Mark? What's wrong, Mark? And I'd said, don't hide your light. Let your light shine. One of the first prophecies I ever received, you know, that we should let our light shine. Amen. Live to the glory of God. 
Don't hide your light because you're afraid of family, neighbours, friends. Live it for his glory Reckless, recklessly. Amen. Amen. Abandon yourself to Jesus. Let him sort it out. Let the dead bury their own dead. You go and preach the kingdom of God. Amen. I was struck by that verse. What urgency that you'd let your father bury himself because of the priority of preaching the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, um, uh, I had stage four um, melanoma cancer and I was in the last, you know, where you black out and you got no glucose and you can barely walk. And I'm like, if I don't preach, I'll die. If I don't preach, I'll die. I know I'll die if I don't preach, you know. I began to get a bit concerned, so I thought I'd better get a will together. So I contacted a friend of mine who's a solicitor, and he put together a will. And I'm looking at this will. This is me. It's not you. I'm just talking about God's work in my life. And I go, well, if I sign this will, I'm signing my death warrant. So I folded the will up, put it in an envelope, and wrote on the front of the envelope, I will not die but live and declare the praises of God. So I went off preaching, <clears throat> could barely walk. One meeting, praying for people, I just sat. <laughs> Another meeting, they put me on a lounge chair on the platform and uh, I wasn't well enough to pray for the sick. So the Lord would just call them out by word of knowledge and heal them. You know, what a, what a, what a valley, you know. <clears throat> But he's never closer than in the valley. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But look, the fact is, is you are healed. So get on with glorifying God and don't let, don't let the devil hide your light, even if you've got a problem. Amen. If you're healed, act like it, speak like it, walk like it. Amen. Don't stop glorifying God just because you've got a problem. Amen. It's true. Turn to your neighbor and say, just because you've got a problem, don't stop. <laughs> Mark 8.35, you know. We have, from time to time, people who come into the meetings and they want a blessing, but they don't want to give God the glory for it. And so they'll ask, they'll write in and say, I could lose my job if my deliverance, me falling over or whatever it is, if anyone sh you know, from work sees that, I could lose my job, my reputation would be on the line, please delete it. And Jesus said, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You can gain your reputation here, but lose it in heaven. You can gain your reputation, maintain your reputation here, but lose it in heaven. There's a guy, Neil, <coughs> He's a British Airways pilot, and he said to me, well, I'm coming to your meeting, and if God delivers me of something and I manifest and you put it on YouTube, that's fine. I'll lose my job, but that's fine. <laughs> Amen? You know, can't you trust God? Can't you trust God that if you're foolish for his glory, that he'll look after you? Amen? Amen? So develop an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. Develop an attitude. One of my practices is every morning when I wake up is to give thanks to God. This is how I do it normally. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's how I start my day. <laughs> Gets the cobwebs out. Amen. Shall we practice? One, two, three. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Now, don't you feel good? <laughs> Hallelujah. I like to lift my hands and thank him. 
for all that he's going to do. Thank him for revival. Thank him for miracles. Thank you for changed lives. Just thank him. It changes the whole atmosphere, you know. Don't, don't, don't start the day with the devil of complaining, you know. Oh, my hip's hurting. Slept on the wrong side last night. Start the day with praise and keep going in praise. You know, in Romans 1.20, it talks about those who, although they knew of God, they knew God through the universe, because God gave us a witness to the universe. It says of them, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. One of the characteristics of a true born-again Christian is that they are thankful. They live to glorify God. Amen? You're not here for this life. You're here for his glory. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm here for his glory. So change your speech to one of thanksgiving, one of praise. I was uh, up north in Queensland and pastor, you know, took me out for dinner with his eldership, his leadership, you know, and he was telling me how the church was so cold and, you know, there was no fire in the church. And so I sat there listening and the whole night they were talking about the football and, and all this stuff and... You try to bring in the Lord and the conversation would go to the weather, go to this, go to that, you know, including the pastor. And I thought, well, that's your problem. It starts at the head. Amen. You know, when we gather together, when we, we should talk Jesus, talk his works, give him thanks, give him praise, be intentional to glorify him. Amen. Don't just be Christ-centered when you come for a meeting. Be Christ-centered at dinner, at lunch, at breakfast. Hallelujah. Change your speech. Let Jesus Christ be Lord of your speech. So Ephesians 5.3 says, Fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for the saints, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Amen. It really, you really have to be intentional not to whinge and complain about life. You know? Oh dear me, look what's happened to me. Did you know that Freddie had a heart attack? Oh, you know? And, and all this... If you live in the glory, the glory creates faith in your heart. And faith creates thanksgiving. You know? It's truly amazing what the Lord Jesus does. Truly amazing. Let us remember what he does. Just thinking about Ashok and Elizabeth. They're from Malaysia and they were organizing meetings. They came, they came online, located by the Holy Spirit, and they began to tell me about some sort of problem, I think back pain or something. And I said, I want to pray for your daughter. And the daughter was in Canada, I think. Not sure where, UK, Europe, somewhere. Anyway, I want to pray for your daughter. And they began to tell me about the daughter. I said, I don't want you telling me. I'm going to tell you about your daughter. And uh, I said to her, your daughter is in the palm of God, and the palm of God is power. And um, the daughter came and testified in Holland a few weeks ago. The daughter was suicidal, trying to commit suicide, depressed. And three months after that prophecy, she was completely healed. Amen. Amen. There is another realm that we can walk and live in, a prophetic realm, a realm of God. But when we just focus on 
the things around us and we talk about the things around us, we inhibit the anointing and grace around us. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? So giving thanks with a grateful heart. You got arthritis or something. You got cancer. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Wow. Opens the heaven above you. Just simply giving him thanks. And do you know the center and foundation of praise is the promises of God? So you've got a problem. Thank you, Lord. You are my healer. By his stripes, I have been healed. I praise you and I thank you, Lord. Instead of confessing your problem, you know, I used to, people used to, you know, people come forward for prayer, but previously sometimes they'd come forward and they'd be telling me all their problems and, I, and I'd say to them, don't confess your problems, confess your faith. It's your faith that will heal you. <laughs> Amen? Turn to your neighbour and say, don't confess your problems, confess your faith. It's your faith that will heal you. 2 Peter 1, 4. We have received exceedingly great and precious promises. So we take those promises, exceedingly great and precious promises, we take them into our heart, and what happens? Through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. You partake, you eat, you receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We receive from God with these divine, precious, exceedingly great promises and the effect of them. Because the Bible says, Paul says, that the word works effectively in you who believe. It effectively works praise and thanksgiving. Amen. So if you want to glorify God with your life, let the word indwell you and the word will work in you praise and thanksgiving. If you meditate on the news, all you get is negativity. Amen. If you want to read what's going on, read the Bible. Hallelujah. <coughs> confess the word. Confess it. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When you confess the word, you'll have something to praise God for. It'll change the things around you. Amen. It'll change your mind, change the atmosphere of your mind. That's why many, many times when the Lord heals people of mental illness, schizophrenia, mental torment, I'll say to them now, medicate your mind with the word of God. Medicate. Because the enemy... Go and commit suicide. Go and commit suicide. No one loves you. You're nothing. The enemy puts these, and it, and it changes the atmosphere in the person's mind to become depressed, hopeless, miserable. So when that enemy, that devil, is cast out of your mind and the voices are gone, you've got to replace it. Because the word will create an atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving. It will medicate your mind. So, so important when you're going through something like cancer and the devil will take your cancer against you potentially to create fear and anxiety and you know depression and so on is to counter him, counter him with the word of God. It will create a different atmosphere of praise and thanksgiving. It'll be light in the darkness. Amen. God speaking to anyone tonight? Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 56, 4. Human anxiety for the believer, because human anxiety is a normal thing, all right? But human anxiety is a prompt for praise. Isaiah, Psalm 56, 4. Whenever I am afraid, whenever I'm feeling anxious, that's a prompt. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, 
I will praise his word. Turn your anxiety into praise. Turn to your neighbour and say, turn your anxiety into praise. In God I put my trust, I will not fear what can flesh do to me. Amen. The devil's a loser. What can flesh do to you? <coughs> Praise God. Now, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can resist the Holy Spirit. We can honour the Holy Spirit. When God answers prayer and does something, honour him. All right? Jesus said to the man who was paralysed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God and they were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Amen. Remember the, the ten lepers, only one, a Samaritan, who wasn't a child of God, came back, fell at the feet of Jesus to give him glory. The blind man, when Jesus says, receive your sight, your faith has made you well, immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Amen. You know, some people are like, oh, I'm healed. That's wonderful. I got what I came for. I'm going home now. I'm going to sit in front of the television and veg. You know, well, that's good. No, you, you don't do that with God. You return to his presence and you give him thanks. You give him praise. Lest you grieve the Holy Spirit. You are begging him, crying out to him, have mercy upon me. And he heals you. And then you turn your back on him and you go off and... You do whatever that offends him. We have to honour the Holy Spirit by glorifying God. Amen. The purpose of healing and deliverance and every type of blessing and salvation is the glory of God. When Jesus went to the cross, he said, now I am glorified. The Father is glorified in me. You know, the cross was Jesus' way of glorifying God. Total submission to the will of God. Amen. When you... When you pick up your cross and you suffer for Christ, that's a tremendous way of glorifying God. Amen. Lord, I'm not just suffering. I'm glorifying you in my suffering. Amen. <coughs> so whatever is happening in your life, whatever difficulty you're experiencing, it's for the glory of God. Look beyond the problem, whatever the devil's throwing at you, and look and see your destiny. Wow, God has prepared a tremendous testimony for me. Uh, what is a testimony? It's a tremendous opportunity to glorify God, right? What is a testimony? It's some rubbish that the devil threw at you, and Jesus Christ gave you victory over it. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. So whatever problem you have is an opportunity to glorify God. Don't wait for the Lord to heal you before you start glorifying God. Faith is giving thanks to God before you see the answer. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, come on, thank him right now. You know, the world, to a large extent, does things to be acknowledged by man. But God, who sees in secret, will reward you in the secret place. How many times I've seen people located by the Holy Spirit and then told what they're doing in secret. I see you getting up in the middle of the night and praying and interceding and no one knows but God sees you and he openly rewards you you know doing things just for God living a life to please him without affirmation from people amen you know if no one follows no one affirms me you know everyone rejects me I'm doing it for his glory and his praise you know 
Praise God. Praise God. If you want to live a life of glorifying God, you've got to get rid of a trash. <coughs> get rid of a tra- trash. 2 Corinthians 6.14, what communion has light with darkness? You know, you come to a meeting and you go home and you're watching porn, you're watching horror movies, you're entertaining yourself with darkness. What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Um, One of the graces of God in this ministry, we've seen numerous people healed of blindness or visual impairment. And one lady who was remarkably healed of blindness, um, she wrote to me, after attempting suicide and was in ICU several days, unconscious. And she, you know, she was telling me how she went into darkness. She had um, occult apps on her phone and she had hooked up with a guy who was very demonized and involved in witchcraft. And, and all of this and how it destroyed her life. What accord? has light with darkness. If you are a Christian, you have no connection with darkness. Live your life for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I will dwell in them, in them, And walk among them, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand and give God glory for his word. Lord Jesus, lift your hands. We praise you for your word. We praise you for your word. We praise you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are people here and there are things, darkness in your lives that you need to surrender, renounce, repent of, and come to Christ. There are things that you listen to. There's music that you listen to that you'd never hear in heaven. There's things that you watch on TV. You'd never see it in heaven. There are things that you're saying about other people and about yourself. And you'd never hear it in heaven. Set your mind on things that are above. Where Christ is seated in the heavens. So right now, ask him to forgive you. Ask him for the grace to change. Ask him for his power to come and deliver you from these things. Ask him for the blood to cleanse you. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, we ask your forgiveness. Cleanse us from all communion with darkness. Let us live for the glory of God, we pray. Now, right now, I just, right now, I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me. There are people who have darkness in their lives right now. I want you to come to the front and we're going to believe that this is broken off your life. Whatever it is, is it secular music, things that you're listening to, things you're watching on TV, whatever it is on the internet, things that you're saying right now, just come. Forget about other people, just come. I believe that God will give you a breakthrough from whatever is holding you back in your life. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just come, wherever you are. Thank you, Lord. We believe that the blood will cleanse you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. What would you like to renounce? Worship of false gods. Demons, worship of demons. 
I'm sexuality. The list goes on, bro. I'm not going to say all that. <laughs> um, meth, meth use was sorcery, which is how I ended up worshiping demons, pretty much. Yeah, that's, yeah. Murder in my heart. Real bad, yeah. Real bad, yeah. That's probably real bad. That's probably that's a big one, yeah. We speak wholeness. In Jesus' name, we speak wholeness. We speak wholeness. In Jesus' name. Lord, this is our prayer of faith, and this is what we believe. That this man is whole, healed, delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what we believe, Lord, so we do not doubt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for his confession tonight. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We believe, Lord, that this man is a changed man in Jesus' name. Never again. Thank you, Lord. Someone give praise to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, what would you like to renounce? Um, secular music and movies and scrolling on TikTok and things coming up. Yeah. Let's pray for you. Secular m music, what was it? And movies. What type of secular music? Um, mostly pop music. <laughs> The spirit behind what you're listening to just left you. Okay? I actually saw it like notes around you. Because you used to bop along with it. Huh? Yeah, I did. Dance for Jesus. Um, my name is Stephen. I just got convicted of complaining. Complaining about my situation with my uh, wife leaving and everything. And, and I'm speaking things that I shouldn't be speaking, I, I should be speaking what God can do instead of what's happening. So I just want to renounce that. So what would you like to declare in the Lord over yourself, the wife, everything? What blessing would you like to declare? Um, I'd like to declare salvation over her Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And over my children, my daughters. And... Uh, and, the, and her family. And forgiveness. and forgiveness. I release all unforgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I feel that just your declaring these things is changing your situation, changing your life. Praise God. I, I feel that it's just happening. The grace of God is moving. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. God bless you, sir. Someone give Jesus praise. Amen.